Hi, Facebook. Hello, Instagram. I'm just getting everything set up today. I'm going to pin today's topic on Instagram. We are going to be chatting about what to eat on keto, going back to the basics for your ketogenic diet. I'm just going to tilt this forward a little bit because it's a little bit awkward. Hey, now if you missed it, I just shared my Starbucks card with an epic balance on Instagram. Today is May 29th. It is 2.34 p.m. Eastern. I don't know how long the balance is going to stick around for, but you guys, if you've pre-ordered my book, ugh, Keto for Women, you can go over to my stories after right now and grab my Starbucks gift card and treat yourself to a coffee. We were able to hit 2,000 pre-orders for Keto for Women. So, oh, there goes my phone and it marked my page. <laughs> So as a little thank you, um, you guys can treat yourself to a coffee. Now this is an honor system, so if you haven't pre-ordered, please don't use the card. But you could always pre-order and then go back to my Instagram stories over at Healthful Pursuit. Take a screenshot of my Starbucks gift card. Head on over to Starbucks and treat yourself to a little coffee. Some of you guys have already done it, so that's awesome. Today I'm going to be reading from Keto for Women. Um, there is a section now pretty long. I think we can get through most of it. I think it's about 20 pages. So I'm just going to go over the gist of it. Um, and I think you guys will, even though it's a pretty basic topic of what we eat on a ketogenic diet, a lot of the concepts that I'm sharing in the book and the strategies are something that may be new to you. And it may be a new way of looking at the ketogenic diet in order to reach the results that you want and not get stressed out all the, out all the time about the foods you can eat or can't eat or how to prepare them and just getting all weird about it because I know, I know it can get super weird. So all of these book readings are sponsored by Perfect Keto. Now if you have a bunch of stuff in your cart and you're like, oh my gosh, it's too expensive, I can't even, you can use the coupon code COOKBOOK two zero for 20 percent off all full-size products now this coupon code is only good until the end of june and you can only use it once so choose it wisely load up your cart and enjoy again that's cookbook two zero okay hey girl from washington state says becky hey hi renee ordered my book can't wait to get it i'm so excited too and hello everyone on Instagram. I didn't get to say hello to all of you. Hey Mandy, Talks to Walls, 21 Dances with Dogs. Love that. Amazing. Hey, hi. Okay, let's do this. Now this is from page 83 of my book, Keto for Women. Again, if you guys want to find out more about it, you can go to ketoforwomen.com. You get a bunch of freebies. Don't worry. That's just a bilge pump. One second. Is that noise really bothering you guys? That's horrible. Hold on one sec. Hold on guys. Ah. The dangers of living on a boat, seriously. Okay, we're back. <laughs> Now, this is what you get for like live TV, right? Okay, what to eat. It's important to understand that when somebody says a certain food isn't keto, what they really mean is that the food is avoided on their version of the keto diet. Remember, ketosis is a metabolic state, just like being a sugar burner. Burning glucose requires that you eat carbohydrates and being in a state of ketosis at its most basic requires that you eat fat. There is more at play here like fasting and limited carbohydrate intake, but you get the point. There are approximately a zillion ways to feed a glucose burning body. The only thing they have in common is that glucose is the primary fuel source, not fat. And you probably know people who have been on a glucose fueled diet and reached their goals, found success and are really, really happy and healthy. Similarly, there are many, many versions of the ketogenic diet. And just because some keto experts tell you that a certain foods aren't keto, doesn't mean you can't achieve your goals while eating those foods. It simply means that this person has decided that their particular version of keto is best, and that's fine, but that doesn't make their rules right for everyone. So as you forge ahead with this chapter and learn what foods I recommend, remind yourself that this is only one way of doing things and that you 
have the right to adjust things as you see fit. Checking for questions, cool. My approach is based on the success I've seen with my health, but it may need to be adjusted for your needs. Okay, so there's a chart about questions. Um, you can ask yourself uh, whether or not a food is a good food or a bad food may actually be the wrong question to be asking, so I go through that. And then I introduce you guys to the fat-fueled food pyramid. So this is kind of, in my brain, what I think about on the ketogenic diet. So you can see here at the very top of the pyramid is the extras. Then you have low fructose fruits. And as we go down the pyramid, you're eating more of these. So extras are lower. And then low fructose fruits, you're eating a little bit more than extras. And then there's protein, non-starchy vegetables, healthy fats, and water. So water is at the base of the pyramid, meaning you're drinking a ton of water. And then it goes up to healthy fats. You're eating a ton of fats. Less starchy vegetables, less protein than that, less low fructose fruits, and then just a touch of extras. So do you see how that works? Okay, awesome. And then below the pyramid, I include some examples of what each type of food is. So extras are, are things like indulgences, like alcohol, dark chocolate, or supportive supplements like multivitamins, omega-3s fresh herbs, condiments, so those are like a very small portion of your ketogenic diet. Then you have the low fructose fruits being things like berries, grapefruits, lemons, limes. Then you have protein being things like plant-based, uh, like natto, nuts, seeds, tempeh. And then you have animal-based, which is uh, bone broth, collagen, eggs, fatty fish, free-range chicken, grass-fed beef, organ meats, pasture-raised pork. And then the non-starchy vegetables, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, cauliflower, leafy greens, onions, healthy fats can be plant-based fats or animal-based fats. So things could be avocado oil, avocados, coconut cream, duck fat, ghee, uh, lard, tallow, whatever you'd like. So I get into some recommendations of how to avoid sneaky sugar on your ketogenic diet. Also how to stay cost conscious, that's a really big deal. And then, once I've gone through the pyramid, I also outline some things to be mindful of when you're thinking about the extras. So, all throughout the book, whenever you see this little symbol, which is three blocks, uh, milk, where does milk fall into play? Uh, that would be high, like fat, high fat stuff. Cheese, also, so this is a really good question. So let's break down the pyramid a little bit further. When I think of the pyramid, I think of what type of person I am. Because I'm sensitive to cheese and I'm also sensitive to milk, that's not part of my pyramid. But if it's part of yours and you eat animal protein, I would put high fat dairy or milk or you know cream, um, whipped cream or otherwise into the healthy fat section. And for cheese, I would probably personally, if I ate cheese and also ate animal protein, I would put that in the healthy fat section. But let's say I'm vegetarian, um, let's say pescatarian, so I eat eggs and fish, I'd probably put cheese in the protein pile just because cheese does have protein and because I'm limited in my protein sources, I would consider cheese to be a protein. Now, if I was vegan, of course, cheese and milk wouldn't play a role. So in nuts, seeds, those sorts of things would now be in my protein section and not necessarily my healthy fat section. So you do have to customize your fat-fueled food pyramid for your body and your needs. And I go further into that, into the each and every individual sections, so that you can determine where to put those off foods that maybe aren't listed in the main pyramid. So I go on to explain the extras, like sauces and condiments, sweeteners, including erythritol, monk fruit, and stevia. Now I choose these three because... Um, a bunch of other things like allulose, difficult to find. Xylitol can cause digestive upset, so I don't like to recommend it to everyone, but if it works for you, please include it there. Um, other types of sweeteners, including aspartame, sucralose, asorbitol, they may spike glucose, cause diarrhea, cross a blood-brain barrier, cause issues with your brain, so I don't personally recommend it. I also talk about alcohol, um, and then we get into low fructose fruits. So um, those could be things like berries and grapefruit. I love to add to water just for a little pep in my step. 
alcohol. We have already covered that in a previous reading. And then I get into protein. So the symbol for protein is a little squiggly purple. Now, if you're just joining us, I'm reading from my newest book, Keto for Women. It comes out June 18th. If you haven't already pre-ordered, do it now. You can go to ketoforwomen.com for all the pre-order pre options. And when you pre-order, you get a little Starbucks gift card. I just shared it on my Instagram um, stories. So you guys can head on over to Starbucks today and use my card and get yourself a little coffee just for pre-ordering. And if you've already pre-ordered, do it. Go get yourself a coffee. Bring a book, cuddle up. Okay, so protein is a little squiggly line there. So whenever you see that little purple squiggly, you know I'm talking about protein throughout the whole book. So animal protein, this is where I um, outline beef. So all the different, uh, it's not where I outline beef. Well, it is, but let's get more into it. So how to choose your animal protein. Beef, look for the fattiest cuts of grass-fed and grass-finished options. Eggs, get them free range if possible. Fish, the fattier the better. I always go for wild caught instead of farmed when possible. Now, I like to avoid fish that are high in mercury. And so I had a, a bunch of these little fishes, fishies drawn up. You can see here, these are all the high mercury fish. We have uh, tuna, big eye tuna, a high tuna, king mackerel, martin, swordfish, shark. Um, this was exact. This is from my fishing guidebook, and I was like, "Wait, this is so cool! We should totally put this in the book." Um, Renee is asking, "I missed something about how to get my Starbucks coffee." If you follow me on Instagram, I just posted my personal Starbucks card you, uh, screenshot, so you can just go to Starbucks with that little screenshot. Just take a screenshot of my stories. Follow me at Healthful Pursuit on Instagram. Take a screenshot of my story, go to Starbucks, and just use that screenshot to order yourself a coffee. A bunch of you guys have done it already, and it's an honor system. If you've already pre-ordered Keto for Women, do it. You're welcome, Renee. Um, processed meats. So I'm going to kind of give you a gist of it because we have so much to cover today, so I'll kind of give you a, a Coles Notes version. So nitrites are no good, and we want to try to limit them as much as possible, and I think on the ketogenic diet, we can, like, gravitate toward a lot of processed meats very quickly because it's just easier and a lot of us are busy human beings and don't have time to, to prepare meals for ourselves as quickly as we want and we gravitate more toward processed meats because it's easier. Um, so I like to um, treat myself to bacon and any of the other processed meats. I try to limit my intake so I'll explain a little bit here. Nitrites are formed from nitrates in interact or nitrites are formed when nitrates interact with the iron present in meat to create free radicals. In the body, nitrates can cause cause damage to cells and increase your risk of hypothyroidism. They can also they have also been linked to diabetes, Alzheimer's disease, and cancer. Now before you go to the internet machine and type in nitrate rich food and swear off anything with a nitrite, PS, there are like tons of them. It's worth mentioning that while plants such as beets, celery, lettuce, spinach, and radishes do in fact have nitrates because of the vegetable's antioxidants and the nitrates transform into nitric oxide, a molecule that's responsible for many healthful body functions, including increased circulation throughout the body. So what does all this mean? Eat conventionally raised processed meats very sparingly, but before you start thinking bacon is off the table, Uncured bacon is good and pork belly is a must on, on your ketogenic diet. So you don't have to worry about it too much. Then I compare conventional beef versus grass-fed, grass-finished beef so you guys can make a decision based on your priorities. So you have the conventional beef column and then the grass-fed beef column. So example is conventional beef is going to have less congelated linolenic acid, a potential cancer fighter whereas grass-fed, grass-finished beef is going to have high amounts of CLA. Um, conventional beef has less antioxidants and vitamins, whereas grass-fed, grass-finished beef, um, a little tip on this is that Publix sometimes has sales on their grass-fed, grass-finished beef, and I'll go to Publix every week to get our groceries, and then when there's a sale on their beef, I will get all of it. Like, actually all of it. I will get everything that's on stock right there and then I'll ask the butcher if they have any in the back and I will buy all of it. 
and it works out to be about $3.99 a pound and the beef is the best. I just love it and it's really inexpensive so watch for those sales because they do happen. So uh, grass fed grass finished beef is rich in B vitamins including theamine, riboflavin, vitamin E, calcium, magnesium, potassium, iron, zinc, sodium, phosphorus. A good way to know that you're eating a really high quality grass fed grass finished beef is when you cook it the fat has a golden tint to it. Um, the beef up in Canada, I've never actually been able to find beef that's as high quality as TK Ranch up in Alberta. Their beef is like golden, golden, like you can very much tell it's yellow. Then we get into the non-starchy vegetables. So that's going to look like this. There's like a little leaf, it's green, so that's what you look through for the whole book. Um, now there are so many types of low carb veggies and I'm sure many of you are very, very familiar. Thanks for my coffee. I drove to the closest Starbucks and waited. <laughs> Amazing. So you must have been the first one to redeem it as soon as I posted it. Um, I can't wait for Keto for Women either. I'm so, gra I'm so glad you got to get a coffee. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you do get a coffee, guys, um, tag me. I'd love to see what you get. Um, so I wanted to focus in this book on sulfur-rich vegetables because I find that they're the most healthful when it comes to just overall uh, benefits that we can achieve on our ketogenic diet by focusing on these low-carb veggies. So those are going to be your bok choy, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, cauliflower, garlic, leeks, onion, and shallots. Now, just because they're sulfur-rich doesn't mean that you're going to get the sulfur like right off the bat. Um, and if you're curious about what sulfur is, I'll also explain it here. Sulfur is a mineral whose benefits are a bit hidden. Unlike magnesium, which will soften your stool, or zinc, which is amazing and quick for stabilizing moods, sulfur offers often goes unnoticed, but it offers great benefits for those who consume it regularly. Sulfur plays a critical role in the synthesis of glutathione, an antioxidant, and taurine, an amino acid that supports the cardiovascular and center ner central nervous systems. It strengthens hair, is necessary for the production of insulin, and it does so much more. So by eating these foods, we can boost our sulfur, but we need to prepare those foods uh, differently. Now, this isn't like a crazy different thing. It's just preparing the foods in a quick and simple fashion. Don't worry, it's not complicated. So broccoli, the best way to eat broccoli is to steam until bright green, green rather, not green, green, and still crunchy. So that can help boost your immune system. Then you have br Brussels sprouts. You steam again until al dente. Now, yes, you could roast them, but you're not going to get the same benefits. Cabbage, slice and let sit for 10 minutes before lightly steaming until al dente. Are you noticing a theme here, like steaming everything? Yeah. Cauliflower, cut into small pieces or pulse florets in a food processor um, until like little bits, like cook, um, like cauliflower rice, let it sit for 10 minutes before lightly steaming until heated through but not mushy. Bok choy, leeks, garlic, onions, shallots, mix raw into salads and dressings. When cooking, slice and let sit for 10 minutes before applying to heat. So you can find that here, just as a little chart to show you how to prepare those low carb veggies so you get the most out of it. And you just heard, it's not overly complicated. Steaming vegetables, super, super easy. Um, why do you let cabbage sit for 10 minutes first so that the sulfur compounds have time to, I guess you could say, fully mature so that you can get the most out of the sulfur? And it's just a really simple way. If you just make a rule for yourself of letting, usually my rule is let all sulfur foods sit for 10 minutes before I prepare. Any of the things like onions, garlic, leeks, I enjoy raw. Otherwise, all the other things I let sit for 10 minutes and then steam until they're still al dente. Um, then we have things like leafy greens, kale, all the things. You guys are pretty familiar with that, I'm sure. And then healthy fats. This is the symbol for healthy fats. You got a little avocado and it's orange. And then I go through uh, the differences between saturated fats and monounsaturated fats, only because earlier in the book, I talk about the APOE4 gene. You can head on over to page 176 on more info and try doing keto Mediterranean style. So 
I outlined this APOE4 gene only because a lot of people that do keto have a gene that doesn't allow them to process saturated fats properly. And so they go keto and then they start gaining weight and they're not feeling good. And it's only because they don't process saturated foods properly or saturated fats rather. Um, so by switching over to monounsaturated fats, they start to lose weight on keto. So if you haven't already tried this switch, sorry guys, boat life. If you haven't already tried this switch, you can quite easily. So saturated fats are gonna be things like bacon, beef, butter, coconut oil, lamb, or tallow or suet. And monounsaturated fats are gonna be almond oil, avocado oil, avocados, hazelnuts, olive oil, macadamia nuts. And then I also outlined some polyunsaturated fats, including salmon and flax, and the benefits of them, how to find them. So this is that chart right there. If you're just joining us, I'm reading from my newest book, Keto for Women. You guys can find out more details by going to ketoforwomen.com. Okay, polyunsaturated, blah, blah, blah. Dairy, so I do outline dairy, how to know if you're sensitive to dairy, how to not, how to determine that. Um, and then if you're concerned about dairy and calcium, I mean, I'm skipping a lot of things, guys. <laughs> I've outlined some foods that are high in calcium. So if you're concerned about your calcium intake, I've outlined some foods that have a high amount of calcium per 100 grams. So things like sesame seeds, sardines are great, great, awesome for calcium. Uh, tofu, I like to stick more to the tempeh variety because it's fermented soy. You also have collard greens, almonds, bok choy, broccoli, and salmon. <laughs> Okay, I'm actually going to read this because I love, love, love this analogy. Cockroach milk, anyone? Humans are the only, only mammals on the planet to drink milk after infancy. So if we follow Mother Nature's guide, adults should probably stop drinking it. On top of that, consuming dairy is consuming milk from another mammal. Milk that's meant to grow a baby sheep, cow, or goat. Think about, a sec think about it for a second. Would you drink pig's milk? What about pigeon? How about cockroach? For serious, these animals do in fact make milk for their young. Gross, <laughs> right? Oh my gosh, cockroach milk, bull. Um, and then I talk about water, which is so, so important on your ketogenic diet. Some of, us, some of us overdo it, some of us underdo it. And so I've given you guys a little like water schedule something that I've been following for the last couple of years so you can schedule in your water and make sure that you're drinking enough. Um, what I like to do is just, this is my husband's bottle, Kevin, because, well, the bottle's name is not Kevin. My husband's name is Kevin. This is my, my husband's water bottle. I actually lost my Yeti, and I'm really, really upset about it. I still need to order another one. And I just make sure I fill this up three times in a day. And I just keep it with me. In fact, now I'm getting thirsty because I'm talking about water. I just keep it with me. I make sure I get through three. Super simple. Okay. Then um, if you're like, you didn't talk about a specific food, which foods are best for me, all those sorts of questions, I've outlined an entire food list to help you with all the different logos and things, higher priority foods, lower priority foods, animal-based foods, non-animal-based or plant-based foods, so you guys can make it. Um, work for you. Now, food swaps, I included food swaps, like if you want hamburger buns, use this. We're just looking at this page. Um, if you want spaghetti, use that. So an example could be fat-free mayo. Use mayonnaise uh, made with 100% avocado oil or homemade. Burger buns, use portobello mushroom caps, iceberg lettuce, bacon woven together and cooked, egg eggplant slices. Um, if you have a recipe calling for legumes, you can use nuts and seeds. So I give you some ideas. Now, let's get into the how to make it. So I've just listed off a whole bunch of foods, cabbage and bok choy and animal proteins and monounsaturated fat, saturated fat, and you're like, but how do I make recipes with this? And it can be really hard to like take all this keto knowledge and then be like, but what do I make for myself and my family? This is a strategy that I've been using. Uh, I can't wait for this one to ship. Oh yeah, thank you so much. Um, this is a strategy that I've been using for a really long time. I've shared this with every single one-on-one -on -one client I've ever had and it's super simple for them to understand and you might not capture it in an audio-based like 
visual type of way, but as soon as you have the book in your hand on page 105, I show you the strategy and it's super, super simple. So I'm gonna show this to you and then explain what it all means. So I start off with how to make a fatty drink and I outline the ingredients you'll need. And these ingredients aren't like specific to like coconut oil and collagen. I just say things like add a protein, add your extras, add your healthy fats, start with a base. And then I explain all the different choices you have for all these things outlined within the food pyramid. So you get to make your own fatty drink based on what you have in your house. And it's not just fatty drinks. It's how to make a shake, how to make a sauce and dressing, how to make a hot meal, and how to make a cold meal. So then it becomes very easy. You do not need a recipe to use the strategy, and you can start to teach yourself how to make food without following a recipe. And this, having this skill will like stay with you forever, no matter what eating style you go toward, no matter what you're doing, it becomes so easy for you to prepare a meal for yourself and not worry about recipes. I mean, I do have lots of books like, ugh, the Keto Diet Cookbook to help you if you're like, I don't understand everything in the Keto Diet Cookbook as well as ugh, the Keto Diet, everything and all these recipes are good and align with Keto for Women. But if you really want to step away from all the books and all the structure and just make something that works well for you in your life, it's much easier to do it that way. Um... Facebook just uploaded a bunch of comments that I totally missed. Uh, Jose, is it easy to res respect keto when you're vegan? Yes, totally. I outlined this in the book, but if you want more detail, um, Dr. Will Cole is a good one to follow. I ordered mine. I can't wait to get it. Awesome. I eat, not read. <laughs> get the uncured bacon available. No nitrates and nitrates. I have Hashimoto's and migraines. Yeah, so great tip. Okay, um, so how to make it. Let's keep things really simple here. I could load you up with recipes and resources, meal plans, food lists, and everything in between, but that wouldn't actually teach you anything. Instead, here's a strategy I've used since 2008 after I graduated from nutrition school. It's widely effective and will actually teach you how to feed yourself with what you have on hand. Instead of stressing over recipes, shopping lists, and meal plans, focus on surrounding yourself with nourishing food and then plug in those foods to the following pie charts. So, how to make a fatty drink. Step one, start with a base like bone broth, coffee, or tea. Step two, add healthy fats. Step three, add protein. Step four, add extras. So all you do is you go back to the list of foods in your fat field pyramid, and you look up, for example, healthy fats. Now I can choose macadamia nuts, duck fat, ghee, lard, cacao butter, and you just plug it in to this little template here, okay? Now I also outline how much of it to add. So if you look at this little guy right here, it says like most of the drink, oh, it's hard for me to see. Most of the drink should be your liquid. You have a little bit of extras, a little bit of protein, and, and like half and half protein to healthy fats. You get that, yeah? It's gonna be so much easier when you guys have the book and you can see it. Hi, Marina. Thanks for joining our live. So I, I also, because sometimes it can be challenging to totally understand, like just by looking at foods, what to do. So I gave you three different recipes to choose from. So an example of how to make a fatty drink with what you have on hand, you, the base can be bone broth, the healthy fat can be lard, the protein can be none because bone broth itself has protein, so you don't need to add any. Extras could be mushroom elixir, turmeric, ground black pepper, and salt. And so based on this little pie chart of making a fatty drink, I put half coffee, tea, or bone broth. In this case, it would be bone broth, a little pinch of extras, about 20% protein if I'm going to add it, and healthy fats would make up about 25%. Another example, chocolate fatty coffee. So the base would be coffee. The healthy fat would be MCT oil. The protein would be collagen hemp seeds. The extra would be cacao powder and stevia. Now again, I'm telling you, like once you have this book in your hands and you can see what I can see perfectly, you're gonna be like, this is the coolest ever. I've never had a client get confused about the strategy and I've probably shared it with, I don't know, 1100 people one-on-one. Um, -on -one. So I'll show you guys the shake, sauce and dressing, hot meal and cold meal so you can get a sense of what I mean in each one. Let's see if I can get it in all of them. 
So how to make a shake is here. And you can see that the first one, let's see if I can read it. Start with a base, go on to healthy fats, add your non-starch vegetables, add protein, add low fructose fruits, and add your extras. And then I kind of show you with this little pie chart here how to structure it properly. And then I give you three examples on how to set up the recipe. Make sense? Then we have our hot meal. Let's see if I can get it in for everybody. Okay, so with hot meal, you start with your healthy fats, you add your non-starchy vegetables, you add your protein, you add your extras, and all of a sudden you have a hot meal. Is this making sense to you guys? Awesome. All the hearts and thumbs if it is making sense. And then I give you some examples of recipes, how to use it, how to plug in these to different systems so that you can start to make your own meals. If you're just joining us, I just saw an influx. I'm reading from my newest book, Keto for Women. It comes out June 18th. If you haven't already pre-ordered, go to ketoforwomen.com to get your copy, plus a bunch of bonuses, freebies, all the things on that page. Yeah, so um, this is one of the most simple strategies that once you have it in your hand and you see it in real life, it'll start to make a bunch of sense to you. I include things like... Um, how to make a raspberry lime green smoothie, ultra fatty smoothie, a no fruit buzzed smoothie, how to saute kale and spice chick spiced chicken thighs properly, and just really easy ways that you can start to see an actual keto food list like this and start to see actual meals coming from it. And that's why in Keto Diet Cookbook, um, I give you guys a very clear strategy on how to prepare foods based on this very similar strategy. So once you learn like how to saute things properly, how to boil things properly, you're kind of set to make your own recipes and make it super simple. Uh, Kareen EIG says, do you recommend the book even with having your other books? Okay, I'm going to explain this. And then there were a couple more questions and I think we're done reading from Keto for Women. So the Keto Diet. This is the complete guide to a high fat diet for beginners. There is over, I can't even remember, 125 recipes. There are meal plans based on the fat fuel profile that you choose, which I also talk about in this book and defining your fat fuel profile. So it can be a good resource for you to have this. Um, it goes through what sweeteners to choose, how to deal with um, grocery shopping, where to grocery shop, where you're gonna find the cheapest groceries, the most expensive groceries, how to tell if you're in ketosis, uh, how to stop binge eating, all those things. So this is a beginner's guide and really the nitty gritty of all the ingredients. Then in here, I talk in the Keto Diet Cookbook, um, my newest that came out April of this year, 2019. Um, this is all meal plan based um, structure with recipes. And so if you're looking for meal plans and super simple meals that are ready in under 30 minutes, the cookbook is great. I love this book. It's my favorite of all of them for recipes. So there aren't, there isn't a lot of beginner information, but I do tell you how to plan your meals um, with the ingredients you have on hand and um, how to structure your meal plans based on your hunger level. So that's the Keto Diet Cookbook. Now both of these are already in stores. You guys can go to ketodietbook.com to check out both of these books. Um, you can get them at Costco in Canada, um, Barnes & Noble, Indigo, Target, Amazon. I'm sure I'm missing a whole bunch. They're basically everywhere. Um, and then Keto for Women is Keto for Women. I would say of the two books I just shared with you, there's about 5% of the information in both of those books are in these books just as a, a refresher but then I get way 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 more into how to adjust keto for your female body none of my other books do that the reason I wanted to make keto for women is that I came out with a program called happy keto body last year and a bunch of our members had questions about how to eat the right food for the imbalances that they had and a happy keto body goes through a lot of the nitty-gritty detail on how to combine keto with your lady body, but it didn't go through a lot of the um, food support of that. So that's where Keto for Women came in as a gap that we um, wanted to fill. And by we, I mean me. 
<laughs> Sometimes I talk in wheeze, but it's just me's. You're a member, Lisa. That's awesome. Thank you so much for joining Happy Keto Body. I hope you're really enjoying it. In fact, we have a coaching call tonight. If you are joining, that'd be great if you're a VIP. Um, uh, did I cover all the questions there? Um, amazing. Let's check. Uh, thank you. I just pre-ordered. Amazing. So uh, my Starbucks gift card still has money on it. So if you've already pre-ordered Keto for Women, head on over to my Instagram screenshot that Starbucks gift card, treat yourself to a coffee. If you haven't already pre-ordered, I bet you there's still time to do that, then screenshot that Starbucks gift card. I'll let you guys know when all of you have used it up. Thank you so much for joining me for another live. Oh my goodness, I better get ready. I got an interview in about 45 minutes uh, for a summit that's coming up. And just thank you for all your support. And I hope today's conversation, going back to the basics about what to eat on a ketogenic diet was helpful for you. And I'll hopefully be back um, before the weekend or on the weekend to answer more of your questions. Um, if you're trying to figure out whether or not Keto for Women is good for you, as the first book to read on keto, it does go through the basics. So if you're not familiar with keto, you can definitely start with Keto for Women or any of my books. I go through the basics in different ways in each of my books, just in case you can only afford one. It definitely goes through the basics of a ketogenic diet so that you can hit the ground running and start with the program. So thanks again for hanging out, and I will see you guys soon. Okay. Bye. Bye.